Good morning, everyone. It is truly an honor to share the stage and be here among heroes. I just want to tell you about a moment that transformed my life. Nearly 18 years ago, I made a decision in my life and career that has truly impacted me, made a positive difference in my life. At the time, I was a student, an undergraduate student in college, and you would think it would be declaring my major, but that wasn't it. The life-changing decision that I made was to become a mentor. At the time, I will say that I was really ambitious because I took on mentoring not one, but two lovely yet rambunctious six-year-old girls, as seen here on the screen. They kind of look like uh, innocent, sweet kids, but they also were a world of trouble, but not really. They just kept me on my feet and you know, kept me energized. But what I learned from them has truly fueled my passion for being a mentor. They taught me so much about what young people need from us. And actually, it was because of them that I launched a social enterprise back in 2010 called Empowered Flower Girl. And the goal of that enterprise is to help young people by helping them to transform their relationships with one another and also to help them live above bullying, societal pressure, and other social and communications challenges that face them. Now, these two girls and the youth that I've mentored after them were truly an inspiration. They showed me a few things that young people need. And for those of you in the audience who may be considering mentoring, just know that there are a few characteristics that you'll need. One is patience. You'll definitely have to pack your patience working with you. The second is persistence. You gotta keep at it with them. Also, consistency. They need you to show up each and every day that you say you're gonna show up. And finally, commitment. It takes a huge amount of commitment to make a difference for young people. In addition to the youth that I've mentored, what really, really ignited the fire under my feet to step up in this area of youth empowerment and development was when I stumbled upon a report from an organization called Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership. In that report, they stated the value and benefits of mentoring for young people. They mentioned things like Young people who had a positive role model outside of their parents were more likely to graduate high school and attend college. They also were less likely to engage in risky behaviors such as truancy, uh, premarital sex, as well as uh, drug use. But what really, really challenged me and caused me to be diligent about this work is when I learned that one in five young people in this country will grow up without a mentor. That means millions of children and teens across the United States may face growing up without a positive role model. And they specifically laid out populations of youth that need mentors, like youth who are in and aging out of foster care. Now, there's also a need for youth who grew up like me with an incarcerated parent. So many young people who are lacking one or more of their biological parents definitely need people like you to step up and step in. Now, I know I talked a bit about a deficit, but there are organizations and groups out here who are making a difference in the lives of young people, and I definitely want to acknowledge their work because they are doing tremendous things in our communities. Organizations that I admire, like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, how they pair and, and match mentors and mentees together. And also, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Uh, they have done tremendous work in outreach to our youth. And I definitely want to acknowledge their work. But there's also a few groups where 
we may not have really looked at and explored how they're engaging and connecting with young people. They're definitely having an impact in the lives of young people by employing these qualities of patience, persistence, consistency, and commitment. They're reaching young people where they are. And the first group that I want to talk about, I actually learned about them uh, while watching a CNN report uh, roughly around three years ago, 2015. Uh, I was very fascinated by this report, and uh, I was also saddened because the first group that is definitely making an impact and a connection with our young people are terrorists, in particular ISIS. Now, you may be a little surprised that I would mention them, and I was too when I learned how they were actually connecting and, and engaging with young people. They're meeting them where they are. Terrorist organizations over the years have become very tech savvy in their outreach efforts. While many adults that I know who are in the space of youth empowerment refuse to go on social media or you know, get involved online, ISIS is taking advantage of that. What shocked me the most was when I learned about three girls from Denver who ventured off into the unknown to join ISIS in Syria. They skipped school, boarded a plane on their way to Syria. They actually were detained in Germany during a layover, thankfully. The FBI got notification from their parents and other agencies that these girls were headed to join ISIS. And I thought to myself, what would possess a 15- or 16-year-old girl to want to join ISIS? Well, I quickly learned that the reason is because they had a, a sense of isolation. Uh, they felt alone. They wanted to be a part of something. At that age and stage in their development, young people, they just want to belong. And organizations and groups like ISIS, they're tapping into that. Another group which has stood the test of time and that has been actively recruiting and engaging young people like no other organization, that would be gangs. Some of us in this room may know a young person involved in gang activity. And chances are, if you aren't aware, they probably are involved and you just may not know it. Because nearly one million children and young adults are said to be involved in gang activity throughout this country. I know personally a young relative who joined a gang after his parents divorced. Um, he felt abandoned by his father who wasn't there for them. His father wasn't there and the gang was. They became family. So groups like the Bloods and Crips and Aryan Brotherhood and also MS-13, which has definitely been on my radar and on the radar of the FBI, MS-13 is connecting with young people who many of us are rejecting. While we're busy building walls, MS-13 is building bridges to new Americans, to immigrant children from South and Central America. They're welcoming them, giving them opportunities in this new, new land. So let's really think about how we can engage young people. What is our level of commitment? I think our level of commitment has to be as strong as the next and final group because they are quickly emerging as one of the top recruiters of young people in our communities. And many people may not be aware of this, but sex traffickers, they're connecting with our young people. Pimps have a way of tapping into the minds of young people like no one else I've seen. I've watched documentaries about how they actually study youth development, psychology, so that they can use their insidious uh, recruitment tactics to have young people join them. Whether it's trafficking drugs or trafficking their body, these pimps are engaging our young people and connecting with them. The young people in our communities who people have given up on, our throwaway babies are being accepted with open arms. Those young people who are aging out of foster care, 
youth who come out as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, young people who've been kicked out of their parents' homes, they're being received by these traffickers. So we have an opportunity today, and I don't want to use scare tactics, but what I do want to give you is a sense of urgency, why it's vitally important for us to come together and make a difference for young people. There's so much we could learn from these groups. If we have the patience, the persistence, the consistency and the commitment in the lives of young people, we can truly make a difference for them. We have to match their level of dedication. And I challenge you, if you don't think that you have what it takes to be a mentor, or you are not sure whether you are the person who will make a difference, just know that young people, well, although, although we are at the Hero Roundtable, they don't need superheroes. They just need someone who's there. So if you have a big heart and a little time, please consider mentoring. It could, make a, a tr it could truly make a world of difference. I know that because I've been a mentor for nearly 20 years now. And I will say that it's had the biggest impact in my life. It has transformed who I am and who I will become. And you can do the same for a young person in your life. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.